Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Recap, a guys review. I'm coming to you from Bali, Indonesia, so this is going to be a little bit different. Normally I take notes, read them back to you, that old jazz, but this, I'm actually going to read an article that has the recap of last night's episode, and I think that's going to help us kind of get through this while I'm on the road, if you don't mind. And just to reward you guys, I thought I'd share a few of my, uh, a few photos of my trip to Indonesia. The first one, this is where I'm actually recapping from right now. This is my setup in our little lounge here at the hotel suite, and I'll show you a couple other photos that I took. That's a nice one, right? Steam coming up in the morning. Here, here we are in the jungle. Took these photos with my wife and took this nice photo for diving into a beautiful, serene pool. And look at this. A bunch of monkeys. No monkeying around. Long-tailed macaques. Macaque? Macaque? Either way, there they are. Uh, and uh, they're all over the place. We had to literally uh, uh, you know, run away from them a few times they say, don't make eye contact. I was raised to be a gentleman. So the first time I made eye contact, next thing you know, a gang of monkeys was chafing at, chasing after me. Okay, so that's where I'm at. If you're wondering, hey, Dave, you're looking a little nervous out there. That's because I'm fighting for my life and I have no transferable skills against other primates. Okay, here we are. The Bachelor recap. Like I said, I'm just going to read the Entertainment Tonight recap and we can sort of discuss it as we go. Zach and his potential wives head to Budapest where the Bachelor picks his final four. The week before Hometowns is always eventful, and this episode of The Bachelor was no different. Can you believe that? We're already at Hometowns. How wild. Greer emerged from COVID quarantine. A woman was sent home during her one-on-one -on -one date, and the group date played out like an episode of The Mentalist Budapest. So let's recap. Welcome to Budapest, Hungary, the epitome of romance, a.k.a. the perfect environment to fall in love. Okay, so here is, here's who we have left. The remaining women. Katie, Gabby, Charity, Brooklyn, Kat, and Greer. In absentia for the moment, are super excited at the idea of bringing the bachelor home to meet the family. The first woman to get a second one on one date is Katie. Everyone coos and congratulates her when Ariel reads the card, but once she leaves for her date, the spiraling begins. I'm really disappointed, says Kat. I feel like not chosen. Girl, that's because you were literally not chosen. Yeah, I just feel like he's not that into me. That's true. He's not, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, so Katie says, I can't wait for my family to meet Zach. Nothing is guaranteed. And then anyway, so they're strolling around. Um, we're going to have to see how this all goes down. Um uh, Zach does something very unusual for a star of The Bachelor. They say he admits out loud that he and this woman he might propose to do not know the most basic facts about each other. He said, we're far along in some of the simplest things we don't fully know about each other. So if you ever want to just throw out a thing like, I want to know your favorite color. Um, to that end, they both vow to start spouting random facts about themselves. So yeah, that's good. Good to know they're getting their random facts in. They're doing the whole thing. Um, and then what do we have here? A uh, sort of a, a hand-typed letter. Dear Katie, ever since the day I met you, I knew there would be something special and so on. Katie's message, meanwhile, has a few typos but is equally heartfelt. Dear Zachary Shackle O. Cross... Thank you for making... Oh, yeah. It's, it's, how funny is this? They don't know how to use typewriters. You know, do you remember that? You ever, you ever use a typewriter? They have the little whiteout thing if you go over it. Either way, it uh, looks like they're falling in love, typewriter or not. Um, <clears throat> she and Zach, they do dinner uh, in the bathhouse. Okay, yeah, you go to Hungary, you go to the bathhouse. Katie's yearning for stability. So now you're going to marry an influencer. Uh, her father walked out when she was still very young, and she didn't really meet him again until she was 16. I have a very similar story. Uh, but by then, it was a little too late to build a real relationship. Her mom did remarry, but then that dude left, too, when Katie was in eighth grade. At the end of the day, I lost two father figures in my life. Yikes. That's tough. But hey, you know, it's good, to sh good she's sharing her emotions here. Uh, very moving and emotional. Zach loves it. Recognizing how hard it is for her to share that just shows real strength. Pretty damn special, she says. Um, Katie's going to hometowns. Okay, she gets the rose. Naturally, they celebrate. They make out. Uh, now it's time for the group date. Kat, who took it very hard when she didn't get the second one-on-one -on -one of the week, rebounded and is determined to have a good time. She says, I'm just hoping that we're getting back on track before bringing him back to my family, and we're going to have to see how that all goes. So then they do this thing where they meet with a magician, mind reader, alchemist, and psychonaut. 
um, um, mm-hmm, this will see, you know, that's kind of, I, whenever that happens on the show, I'm always like, that's going to be a no from me. Hungary, explains Zach, is basically the birthplace of magic. You know, I thought it was actually Prague that was the birthplace of magic. But I, either way, I don't really know. Um, anyway, so the, um, how does this work? The magician proceeds to draw a heart with a red pen on the base of Zach's left palm and then takes the heart with his fingers. He has Zach blow on his fingers to transport the heart to one of the women. If the connection is real, the heart will appear and then Gabby wins so you can see the 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 uh, nice little uh, magician's work there let's see if the magician can make a miracle happen and one of the women actually ends up with Zach let's see if that happens uh, because the success rate is pretty low folks all right so there's Kat's face she's like oh but come on and of course uh, you know I don't know how the magic trick works but clearly it's pre-planned all right props to producers for coming up with the most insecurity inducing sleight of hand nonsense possible how funny is that the mind reader says that cube represents Gabby as a person and because she decided it was made of glass that means people can see through her um anyway so you know very nice stuff um then they do some uh, neuro-linguistic programming. We're just going to barrel through this, folks. Everyone's on the edge uh, as they head into the after party. I want Zach to feel comfortable to meet my family, says Charity. And after today, I don't know if he does. Cheer up, honey. Looks like the Bachelor interns made you all some fruity drinks. Charity is still tortured by her experience with the mentalist. Will Zach decide that she has too many trust issues? She says she's actually terrified. You can do better than Zach and probably will. Ariel sits down with The Bachelor first and immediately launches into a hilarious impression of her father. Uh, here's what Ariel said. My dad was like, Ariel, you can't do the show. I know what they do there. Orgies, she says, speaking in a Ukrainian accent. He's like, you'll walk into a room and they will force you to get naked. And then, um, yeah, like, yeah, get Ariel's father on the show. Uh, I, will, will they be at Hometowns? I guess maybe we'll meet the guy at Hometowns if she makes it that far. Um Ariel raves to Zach about her loving family and community, saying that she feels the love and support of the entire Ukrainian Jewish immigration in New York. Uh, That's a handful, uh, and so is Ariel. She says she misses having the love of a partner, and that's the thing I want most in this world, she admits. Okay, then it's Charity's turn to talk. She says she's 100% ready to be engaged. I mean, Charity's young, but so is Zach. They're both 26. Zach is grateful for her candor, and he wants Charity to know that he sees a possible forever future with her. Yeah, that's not exactly selling it to me. I kind of see possibly, maybe, I don't know. Then Gabby, Gabby received the heart, but she's still feeling insecure. Um, she says, I'm super ADHD, so I've always worked on controlling that. Um, she's worried he won't want to deal with the manic pace of her thoughts or her easily distractible nature. Pish posh, says Zach, you're fun to be around. Yeah, uh, well, Kat's chat with Zach end on an equally positive note? Most likely not. She goes into it worrying about how Zach will feel now that he knows she's contemplating leaving this journey in the past. But it turns out the Bachelor is more nervous about the moment the mentalist asked Kat if she was ready to have Zach to meet her family, and she said, mm-hmm, I think so. So, Gat, Kat, what gives? The, and again, they, they've known the guy for two weeks. Of course they're going to be hesitant. She said, these days have been hard. Choking up, it was just too much. Dabbling away the tears, Kat explains that in life, she often finds herself looking for an escape when things get hard because it's easier. But she wants Zach to know that she was and is determined to push through those moments with him. I, too, want that forever feeling. I see that as our future as well. And anyway, so then they kiss. Uh, so there it is. They they did the thing. Kat's crying again. She said, I hate not feeling wanted. And she starts weeping. It sucks. Okay, so clearly she's, you know, she maybe it's her intuition for kind of knowing she's not going to be the one. All right, so now Zach greets greets Greer in his hotel room. Let's get through this. Holy cow. It's been three weeks since they've seen each other in person, though she did have a very uncomfortable FaceTime chat with him during the COVID cocktail party two episodes ago. She barely survived that virtual row ceremony, so the chances that Zach's still going to want to keep her around now are slim. All right, so she says, I do see something between us. I guess I was just wondering where you're at. Resting his hand on her knee, Zach begins reminiscing about their night one connection and how fast and hot it was. Unfortunately, though, we've both had weeks stolen from us. Day one to now, and I'm just following my gut, my heart, and and to give a hometown rose, I need to feel 100% confident that I can see a future, and I don't feel that. Greer does not love it, so there she is. She says, I completely understand. I understand where you're coming from. 
Either way, what a weird storyline Greer ended up being. No offense to her, just, you know, the COVID and the quarantine and all that. And the weird kind of cross-examination that, that she had on the Zoom chat with him. Uh, my next video is going to discuss Greer and what she may or may not talk about at The Woman Tell All. So make sure you're subscribed to get that video. All right. So anyway, um, first... Zach dumps Greer, and now he's off to meet Brooklyn for the first one-on-one -on -one date of his week, Hungarian Huju number two. So he meets um, her, and they have the old bathhouse. They do that again. Um, all right, so we're just going to barrel through that. Uh, everything seems to be going really well. That night at dinner, conversation naturally turns to Brooklyn's family, who Zach may or may not be meeting soon. Brooklyn's dad was not in the picture, but her mom raised her with a lot of help from her grandpa, who she loves dearly. So she tells that whole story. He says, that's sweet. Um, and he says he needs some time to step away from the table to just breathe and think. We saw this in the uh, initial trailer, of course, that that's how the night was going to go. Uh, she's, she, and this is what he says. She has this incredible grandfather who loves her and wants the world for her. And she doesn't take it lightly when she brings someone into the house. If I'm not feeling sure, who am I to be in that house? So, uh, of course, we know Zach's on the way to dumping Brooklyn. He said, it's not fair to you to have me not be fully confident and fully sure going into meeting your family. You do deserve the love I can't give you. I'm so sorry. And then they're crying. Like Greer, Brooklyn thanks Zach for being honest and upfront with her. And they share a tearful embrace before she climbs into the reject SUV, as they call it over here. So there it is, folks, another reject. And then they give her a kiss. They do the love and all that jazz. And then um, uh, also Cat doesn't get a rose. Excuse me. Cat uh, has just one question for The Bachelor. Why? And Zach says that their connection changed since the Bahamas. And he simply couldn't be confident in their future. He said, I shared so much that I've never shared before because I thought we would be so worth it in the end. I'm sorry, that's what Kat said. And then um, Zach says, I tried, I really did. Zach wants her to know that this isn't her fault. It simply just wasn't the right fit. There's not much the poor guy can say that's going to make her feel better. And of course, she knew it was going to be bad. There's Zach hugging Jesse. And then... Um, um, to, so they're done with the final four. We got it, folks. Let me know what you guys think. Now, I know this isn't your standard uh, Bachelor recap, but I'm having a hard time accessing the actual video while I'm out here in Indonesia with the 16-hour time difference. But I'd love to know your thoughts. We have Charity. We just Well, we just got rid... We have Gabby Cat. Hold on. A Gabby Cat. A nope. Gabby Katie Ariel and Charity. Let me know who you're excited for and uh, do you think we'll see Brooklyn and Bachelor in Paradise? And how about Greer? So much to talk about. Uh, one more video coming your way, so stick around and I will be right back this afternoon. Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. We'll have uh, some fresh content for you over there on the podcast world. All right, we'll see you in a few.